Uso's brand family. We are family. Stransky, and this is an episode I have been wanting to do for an incredibly long time, but something of this kind of magnitude I really didn't want to do until I had the source material at my fingertips, and I finally do. Um, before I get started, I what really the timing of this is actually quite appropriate with what happened with Kevin Hart and his comments and how everybody jumped on him for something he said ten years ago, uh, which was. With 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 the way Twitter goes, it's hard to tell if he's being a, if he's joking or if he's being serious. And if he was, you know, it's it was ten years ago. People change. People are different. But if we're gonna go after people for things that they said a long time ago and completely bury them and throw everything that they you know everything about them away, maybe we should do something about this guy. Karl Marx was a horrible horrible racist, as I will show you in this show, in his own words. The problem, the big problem I have with pe with supporters of socialism, Marxism, and, and for the most part, just anybody on the left is, are these snowflake SJW leftist socialist Marxists. They want to destroy anything that hurts their feelings and offends them. Just because somebody said or did a bad, mean, harmful thing, offensive thing, 20, 30, 10 years ago, they just want to destroy these people's lives and throw them under the bus and erase their existence. But what happens when I take the words of their Lord God, the man whose altar they worship at, and show that he was just even more despicable than any other person that these people can attack? So, let's dive in and get into Mr. Marx's and Engels' own words. And for the record, I should make sure I mention, too, that Engels was just as racist, although... He was a little bit more intelligent, and after all, he was Marx's puppet master and sugar daddy. So let's start digging into some of what Mr. Marx had to say about people who were much, much different. Let's talk about how he thought that women should be in his society. Marx's description of the proletarian dictatorship phase of communism in which, quote, this movement of opposing universal private property finds expression in the brutish form of opposing to marriage, certainly a form of exclusive private property, the community of women, in which a woman becomes a piece of communal and common property, end quote, and, wit, and in which, quote, women passes from marriage to general prostitution, end quote. Marx, in his idea of the proletarian dictatorship, in which the women is a piece of community property, basically a free slut. That's what Marx thought of women's role in his society. Here we have something, a... I lost something here. I feel so stupid right now. I have something that I lost and I'm trying to go back to find it. I apologize. Oh, no, I didn't lose it. And here's what Engels had to say about a man named Paul Lafargue, who was Marx's son-in-law and a socialist politician and had, uh, and what was, I forgot what his ancestry was. But it was mostly white. Had some uh, some Hispanic in there. Had about could have had had no more than an eighth of African in him. But he was mostly white. And here is what um, Engels had to say about him. And some of these words I refuse to repeat. Or I well, I know one word for sure. I'm not going to repeat. Uh, being in his quality as an N, a degree nearer to the rest of the animal kingdom than the rest of us. He is undoubtedly the most appropriate representative of that district. Now, what he is referring to is, is Lafarge was running for a uh, municipal council of the 5th 
arrondissements, which is a district in Paris which contained the zoo. In other, wor in other words, he was ref using his lineage, he was referring to him as, as an animal, or very popular phrase that people, a very popular um, racial epithet for Africans is monkey. So kind of what he was going for there. And another thing, uh, towards in 1880, Marx copied this, showing his agreement and support of this statement from the work of Sir Henry Maine. Quote, modern research conveys a stronger impression than ever of the separation between the Aryan races and races of other stocks, end quote. And this here, I'm going to read directly from the book to show that also that they were supporters of imperialist conquest and taking of lands from races or people they determined were lesser and needed to be pushed in the right direction or just wiped off the, or just completely swept into the dustbin of history. Uh, quoting from the book, As for the majority of mankind, it lived under a historic conditions which Marx and Engels generally termed Asiatic despotism. The practical cons consequence was that these native people stood outside the theater of history. They were obstacles to the coming revolution. After the victory of the latter, they would have to be ruled by some sort of consortium composed of the proletarian dictatorships of the advanced countries of Europe, the United States, Canada, and other white British dominions. This external domination would continue for an indefinite period. Race hatred and race opposition, the justification of foreign conquest, and a white colonialism, the denial of the right of non-white peoples to national independence, relentless terror against nations, peoples, and races whom Marx and Engels despised, a policy of war and conquest that would ensure that other such peoples, quote, disappear from the face of the earth, end quote. These ideas gener constitute a generally suppressed portion of the enormous literacy legacy which Marx and Engels left behind them. Continuing, go to section two. Part two, I should say, sorry. Chapter seven, Karl Marx on the Negro. Now, there is a, he had this one, um, there's one, uh, what's the, what the best way to describe this gentleman, who was a, pretty much a rival of Marx's, who was mostly Jewish, didn't really, uh, as far as we know, did not have any African blood in him. However, here's what Marx would say about him as a way to try to insult him privately. He was nice and respectful to this guy to his face, but here's what we'd write to Engels to him behind his back. He rose where he would refer to him as the Jewish N. LaSalle. The man's full name was Ferdinand LaSalle. He wrote to the he wrote on July 30th, 1862, he wrote this to his sugar daddy Engels. It is quote, it is now absolutely clear to me that as the both the shape of his head and his hair texture shows he descends from the Negroes who joined Moses' flight from Egypt, unless his mother or grandmother on the paternal side hybridized with an N. Now this combination of Germanness and Jewishness with a primarily Negro substance necessarily creates a strange product. The pushiness of the fellow is also N-like. And he also, Marx was also a believer and supporter of the works of a, of a, scient of a scientist or should I say evolutionary biologist by the name of uh, Pierre Trimo, who uh, proposed the theory that uh, that black people were a degenerate form of humanity, not rather instead of the starting point of humanity. Marx called Trimo's work, quote, a very significant advance over Darwin, and then later wrote to Engels, that Trameau had proved that the common Negro type is a degenerate form of a much higher one. And the, Trameau, and the words that Trameau used were, the backward Negro is not an evolved ape, but a degenerate man, which Marx made, believed made Trameau superior to Darwin. And as much of a racist as, as much of a despicable racist as Engels was, he was also much, much more intelligent and being uh, Marx's puppet master, he made sure that Marx never supported this statement publicly when he wrote back to him. The stories were... Oh, crap, where did it go? Okay. 
Where did I lost it here? I'm sorry. Yes, he. Okay, I found it. Sorry. Yeah, here's what Engels had to say to try to dispute him, to try to keep him from saying these things and publicly and ruining what they were trying to accomplish. He wrote back, Engels wrote back to Marx, quote, The stories about the N. Santa Maria and about the transformation of whites into Negroes is laughable, namely that the traditions of the Senegal ends are worthy of unconditional belief precisely because the fellows don't know how to write. The way the fellow explains how we Rhinelanders honor Devonavian Transi transition transitional rocks which have not been underwater since long before the era of coal formation did not become idiots and ends he will perhaps show us in his second volume or assert that we really are ends also too Marx was a supporter he supported Negro slavery in the United States when a uh, Frenchman French socialist thinker in France by the name of Pierre Joseph Proudhon wrote a, a book called The Philosophy of Poverty. Marx replied with a vitriolic rebuttal entitled The Poverty of Philosophy in 1847. Proudhon had been childish enough Proudhon, oh, sorry, I'm reading from the book, had been childish enough to advocate the emancipation of the Negro slaves in the United States. Here is Marx's response to that. Quote Without slavery, North America, the most progressive of countries, would be transformed into a patriarchal country. Wipe out North America from the map of the world and you will have anarchy, the complete decay of modern commerce and civilization. Abolish slavery and you will have wiped America off the map of nations. And then when the Civil War followed, he would then... Support, and him and Engels would then support the North simply because of they wanted because they feared that a South victory would um, disenfranchise and uh, potential socialist revolutionaries from coming over from Europe and cause and starting a revolution in the United States. I read from the book. Let's see here. And here is a quote from Engels writing to Marx on January 7th, 1861, three months before the firing at Fort Sumter started. He wrote, quote, The slightest riot by guerrillas from the north could set everything ablaze. In any event, in one way or another, slavery appears rapidly to be approaching its end, and then the same thing will happen to cotton production. How that will affect England will soon be seen. And I, end quote. And I read from further from the book, Marx was more concerned with the dangers of Confederate victory to potential revolutionary developments within the United States. He believed that a Southern triumph would extend chattel slavery throughout the North. This would depress white wages, cut off the flow of European immigration to America, and stifle the possible growth of American revolutionary labor movement. And reading further in the book, in other words, the important result of Northern victory for the South was that the Confederate States would be opened up to a flood of European immigrant workers who could form the basis for a future socialist and revolutionary movement. There was, and also, too, this is very important, there was no place for the Negroes in this movement, as Engels saw it. They were destined to sink to the bottom of society as, quote, squatters. The Southern terms would be, quote, sharecroppers and, quote, field hands. It should be clear and apparent to everybody that Marx and Engels' idea of the proletarian dictatorship had no place for Negroes, had no place for what they determined lesser peoples. And, that, and those are just one of them. Also, too, they f thought very lowly of Mexicans. Another thing, another quote to support their, or to further their support of imperialist conquest and takeover and extermination of lesser peoples and subjugate, or subjugation of lesser peoples, I should say, comes, comes from something that Engels wrote in the Neue Reich Zeitung on February 15, 1849, after California was annexed by the United States. Quote, it is a misfortune that magnificent California was seized from the lazy Mexicans who did not know what to do with it. 
All impotent nations must, in the last analysis, owe a debt to those who, under the laws of historic necessity, incorporate them in a great empire, thus allowing them to take part in a historic development which would otherwise be impossible for them. Evidently, such results cannot be achieved without crushing a few sweet little flowers. Without violence, nothing is ever accomplished in history. Moving on, another group of people that these two thought were lesser of were Jews, even though Marx himself was a full-blooded Jew from both sides of his parents, descended from from, from very well-respected rabbis. Back to LaSalle, he would, one of the things that he would refer to LaSalle as, and I'm not going to repeat some of these words, he would refer to him as the little K, Ephraim Smart, a shameless beast, a pompous ape, and a water Pollock Jew. Engels, Engels would echo some of these things, referring to LaSalle as a Nothing but big, nothing as quote nothing but a greasy Jew from Breslau end quote, and who quote has always been repulsive to me end quote. And then, famous essay that people that some of his apologists have tried to write off as him saying that Judaism this form of Judaism is the highest form of capitalism could not be further from the truth. In fact, something like this. You might find, if you didn't know better, if I wasn't telling you that Marx wrote this, you'd think this came out of Mein Kampf. Then, no, this is from his essay called On the Jewish Question. Quote, what is the secular basis of Judaism? Practical need, self-interest. What is the worldly cult of the Jew? Haggling. What is his worldly God? Money. Money is the jealous God of Israel before whom no other God may exist. Money degrades all the gods of mankind and converts them into commodities. What is contained abstractly in the Jewish religion? Contempt for theory, for art, for history, for man as an end in himself. The social emancipation of the Jew is the emancipation of society from Jewishness. Uh, I am just so disgusted with this, I think I'm going to end it there. But there you have it, folks. Marx is not the person you thought he was. This is just going to be the first video in a series I will be doing on the on exposing Marx and showing the people who he truly was, what he was about, and what his true goals were. Thank you guys for listening, and there will be more on this later, and I'll see you guys next time.